Hey guys, just thought I'd do a video um, rather than my normal uploading to Spotify. Um, so this is going to be a new thing for me, uh, mainly to do some um, collection updates and stuff like that. Just some different stuff that wouldn't make sense on the uh, audio sort of format. So um, bear with me. It'll be my first uh, video, my first attempt at this. Um, all this is pretty new to me, all the uh, video stuff. No idea what I'm doing. Um, the, uh, picture doesn't look too bad. I'm happy with that. Um, but yeah, it's going to take a bit of time for me to get used to all this sort of stuff. Um, so today I'm just going to go through a collection of stuff that I've sort of accumulated over the last, um, couple of months, I'd say, um, nothing amazingly new or cult or underground. It's all pretty, you know, standard stuff, but um, stuff I needed to add to, to the collection or, you know, fill some gaps. So, um, yeah, I'll be going through that. And um, just because it's the first video, I thought I'd start with something pretty pretty straightforward and, and um, simple. Also, I'm going to crack a beer. So, um, there we go. Ah, all right. So, first one is uh, Sethereal's. Epicrosis, I think that's how you pronounce it. Yeah, um, it's the last album from 2010, I believe. There we go. Got some nice glare there. There we go. Um, it's pretty different album compared to um, a lot of their earlier stuff, but um. Yeah, sort of going in a bit more of a modern um, vibe when it comes to uh, the Sethereal sound. Um, I can hear some a bit more sort of um, sort of strange thorns sort of uh, uh, riffs going on. Some of the sort of more um, clinical mayhem sort of stuff. Definitely not what they were doing on Nord or um, any of those first few albums. They were sort of venturing out a bit. And um, but it's still pretty good stuff. I'm, I was really happy with it. Got it for a decent price. Um, a lot of this old or older regained uh, albums are quite expensive. So, um, and I don't think Sethereal are much of a you know people don't really talk about them much these days. They're not like a cult band. So uh, the prices are pretty reason reasonable to get. So um, yeah, really happy to have this one. That rounds out the collection. That's six full lengths um, for those guys. Um, I think they're still listed on um, Metal Archives as being active or maybe on hold. I don't know. Maybe they're uh, they're finished, but um, definitely haven't released anything since 2010. Uh, next one is another Sethereal album. We have the Death Triumphant album. There we go. That wasn't the greatest of... Uh... Yeah, so... Um... Yeah, this one's really good, sort of following on from, um, you know, their previous one, but I'd say a bit more um, sort of death metal, some more death metal vibes in that one. You, you clearly hear some Morbid Angel um, sort of mixed in with the uh, the faster sort of um, icier riffs that they're more well known for. Um, it's really good stuff. Um, I like this one better than the final album or the, the last album. But um, yeah, very solid stuff. Glad to have it in the collection and glad to have it, um, yeah, nice nice and cheap as well, like I was saying before. All right, up next we have, been meaning to get this for a long time. It's always been one of my favorite albums of uh, this band. And that's uh, Rotting Christ, Sanctus Diabolus album. Um, got this really cheap as well so very happy with that but yeah um sort of coming off the back of genesis um i'd say this is where they sort of changed not they sort of branched out a bit because they went from this onto theogonia um which was a very like another breakout album you know they've sort of had di different um albums in their career that sort of uh marked some change um you know in different eras of the band this is definitely one that marks going into that Theogonia sort of um, era. Great songs. Um, really, I remember, like I got 
I heard this album back when it came out in 2006, I think it was, um, and really liked it back then. And even to this day, I, I, if I'm listening to Rotting Christ, this is going to be one of the ones that I go to. Um, the title track itself, the last track, Sanctus Diabolus, is uh, probably one of my favorite Rotting Christ tracks ever. Just an evil song, fantastic production. I love um love the development of their uh, productions over the years. Just um, Sackis sort of um, really found his own own uh, way there. So yeah, very much recommend Sanctus Diabolus if you're a Rotting Christ or looking into Rotting Christ. They've um, yeah, they got quite a lot of albums, but uh, this might sort of get overlooked due to um, it being in the mid period of their career. But um, definitely check this one out. Um, up next, we have another Rotting Christ album, and uh, sort of like in the what I was saying about that one getting um, overlooked due to it being in the mid period of their career. This one sort of gets overlooked as well, and that's um, Sleep of the Angels from I think it was '98, and uh, yeah, really cool album. Um, I mean, if you liked um, a dead poem, there's no reason why you wouldn't like this one. Um, I think I prefer a dead poem, but this is still really solid stuff and pretty much in that same vein. Um, they were starting to sort of um, get a bit more clean, bringing in those sort of uh, gothic influences, I'd say. Um, but really strong songs, really good atmosphere, very atmospheric. Um, and uh, of course, it comes with that legendary After Dark We Feel compilation. I don't think that all versions came with it. Um, this is actually the part two of that compilation. But uh, Dead Poem actually came with the second disc as well, just a Century Media compilation. So, yep, yeah, as my, you know, I love Rotting Christ. So, um, all eras, um, some people might just like the early um, pure black metal stuff, but nah, this is really good stuff. All right. Up next, we have another Century Media album. Um, this is the first uh, album I'd heard from this band back in the 90s, um, but I hadn't picked it up. I bought it back then, but uh, obviously sold it. So um, it was good to pick this up nice and cheap again. And that's Get Rid of That Glare, Passage by Samael. Uh, Mark, the, uh, the era where they moved into the, um, the drum machine. And but it's still a very riff based album, really, really good riffs, great atmosphere. Um, I loved it, I played this album so much back in the day. Um, so it feels really good to have it, um, back in the collection again after about 20 odd years. Not sure why I sold some of the albums I did back in the day, but um, yeah, we do what we're going to do sometimes. So, yeah, not much to say about this one. Everyone knows this album, and, and it's a really cool album. Um, people might talk about Ceremony of Opposites and, you know, the early material. I'd probably, you know, Blood Ritual is probably my favorite than this. So, um, yeah, really, really like this album. So check it out. Uh, changing styles a little bit. Um, I have no idea why I've gotten into this band, but I've completely just been obsessed with them. And that is Rat. I, no explanation. Um, maybe I could blame um, Marty, Marty Worm on his, uh, his channel because he's been, uh, if he's not going on about Halloween or Gamma Ray or something like that, it's, um, he'll mention like a rat or something. I think he mentioned rat and that maybe triggered something in my brain, but he definitely um, sent me down the, uh, the rabbit hole of checking out um, all the Halloween stuff that I hadn't heard with um, Andy Darris on it. And I can't thank the man enough. I've been absolutely flogging all the Halloween stuff. I bought all those um, Andy Darris era albums and I can't complain. It's just really, really good stuff. But um, enough of that. But yeah, this rat compilation, not a compilation, but just like a box set with all the uh, sort of like those Roadrunner ones we got years ago with um you know the little cardboard thing of each each uh album that's that's nice and glary for you there 
so yeah it's got the first five albums um my favorite at the moment i'm really listening to uh this one quite a lot and that's invasion of your privacy loving this one it's you know uh, i've never been a glam fan really you know um these guys are a bit rougher they they got a, a roughness about them a ruggedness um I, I hear a lot of sort of like what um priest started to do on um turbo but way better this is like in that sort of vein or maybe priests were influenced by the, what these guys were doing in 84 and 85 and then tried to have a crack at that but um no rats great songs really good um hard rock heavy metal um great guitar playing and haven't really checked out reach uh sorry reach for the sky or detonator um reach for the sky came out in 1988 and detonator in 1990 but the first three geez the last uh couple of months i've been absolutely uh flogging those and they're constantly they get stuck in your head um yeah I, I, if you weren't if you stayed away from rat because you thought they were like really bad glam rock or something like that, that don't don't listen to that they're a really good um straight down the line hard rock heavy metal band with great songs so check out some rat um up next i have a bit of a i have six albums from the same band so i'll just grab them all now and that is uh Another band I've been listening to a heap as well, um, along with Rat, is uh, Bullet from Sweden. Uh, we got the debut there. Um, second album, Bite the Bullet. Fantastic stuff there. Third album, Highway Pirates. Bit of focusing going on there. Uh, their first album for Nuclear Blast, I think it was, and that's Full Pull. We have their fifth album, Storm of Blades. And the last album they did in, was that 19? 2018, we have Dust to Gold. And these guys are fantastic. It's like a mixture of... Um, ACDC, uh, Screaming for Vengeance Era Priest, bit of Accept in there. The singer's very, um, like a mix between um, Brian Johnson and you, you know, Dirk Schneider. So that really sort of gravelly type uh, voice. Um, really, again, like just 10, you know, they'll have 10 songs on an album and all of them are just ultra solid, hardly any um, bum tracks or anything like that. Um, I heard those guys on one of the, the later albums and then sort of um, downloaded a lot of their stuff, but I had to buy them because they, uh, they're just so good. Good drinking music. And that reminds me, I've got to have a drink. So yeah, check out Bullet if you haven't. Um, if you're into that sort of stuff, just put these to the side, which uh, I've got some vinyls here as well. Um, like I was saying before, nothing ultra um, rare or anything like that. These are all easily to get, easily gotten. Um, yeah, first one is uh, De Profundus by Veda, which got released on Nuclear Blast, re-released on Nuclear Blast. Now this one, I was pretty disappointed with actually the vinyl version. I bought the CD version as well. The CD version sounds, it's been remastered, but um, you know, it's acceptable. It sounds pr pretty good. On the vinyl version, I don't think it's a good a good pressing. Yeah, it's good to have it on 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 record, but um, what's the point of having it if you don't like the sound of it? So, um, yeah, disappointing that the record isn't that fantastic. But you know, I'll hang on to it just to um, have it in the collection. But I don't think I'll be listening to this version too much it'll be the uh, cd version that i go to but otherwise a classic classic album from vader um easily my favorite vader album 
All right. Up next, we have the recent reissue of the first Walk Nagar album. And, you know, what can be said about this album? Uh, just a classic in that early era, originally released on uh, Malicious Records from Germany. Sort of, I think, got a couple of reissues through, maybe Displeased or uh, definitely Hammerheart. Or there was that issue with Hammerheart going to re-release it and um, the band put an end to it because it was obviously unofficial. But yeah, we've got the official release here. Double vinyl. Um, so on the second vinyl, it's all these uh, Grieg Hull. <clears throat> sorry, uh, Grieg Harland um, rehearsals, I'd say. Um, yeah, they're interesting to have, but I'm, I'm the type of person who just wants the album. I don't care about all the bonus crap. It doesn't, um, doesn't matter to me. Uh, Sound-wise, it's pretty good. It's not, it's not, it could have been better. Um, I feel like it, it took away a bit of the bite from the original. It, it's a bit, um, bit tamer sounding, um, maybe you know, a little bit warmer. Whereas I think, you know, the original had that really icy um, bite to it. And I think that's what made it so special. And, and again, uh, this album to me has, is one of the best examples of keyboards in black metal. It's just got that really fantastic um, keyboard atmosphere to it, which I think very few bands um, nailed down back in the day. You know, obviously Emperor did with In the Night Side Eclipse, Gehenna. But um, Eva Bjornsson's work on this one is top notch. All right. Up next, we have um, Hell's Headbangers recently uh, put this one out, and that's... Um, Reissue of Season of the Dead by, get rid of that glare. There we go. By Necrophagia. It's um, yeah, really cool version. This um, I'm not really one for for colored vinyls, but um, I think this suits it since you know it's all horror themed and you got the toxic sort of green vinyl there. So really good job. Sounds fantastic, which is uh, the main thing. You know, there's nothing worse than getting a, fan, uh, a vinyl that looks brilliant, but sounds like shit. I prefer them take the time and, and get a really good sound. And this sounds incredible. Um, yeah, really glad to have this on vinyl. Surprised it actually turned up intact and not like a, a bowl. Um, it stayed in a French um, warehouse for over a month before it got to me and I, I was dreading it. I thought, oh, it's going to be all warped and stuff like that. But no, it actually uh, turned up in pretty good um, condition and it's a classic album. You know, a lot of people should know this album. But um, if you're interested in checking out the, the uh, Hell's Headbanger um, reissue of this, definitely go ahead. I highly recommend it. Um, along with the Necrophasia album, I bought this one as well. And that is, um, this is going to be a hard one to pronounce. We have Baxa Axa Axa or Bazazaza. I don't know how you want to pronounce it. Um, Caveman Cult. Caveman Cult. Catacomb Cult. <laughs> I was thinking of the caveman drumming from uh, Grimm on the Borknagar album. Um, yeah, really cool album, really rooted in that sort of mid-paced, um, black metal from the nineties, bit of, um, sort of old rotting Christ in there as well. Um, not overly fast, but highly atmospheric, just it's got that, they've nailed the atmosphere on it. Um, this one's through Iron, no, the Sinister Flame, I thought it was an Iron Bonehead, uh, release. Um, Yeah. Definitely recommend getting this one. It's just on stock black vinyl, I think. No, yeah, nothing fancy there. And that sort of suits an album like this. You know, it's just very evil, grim, mid 90s esque black metal. You don't need like a lime green vinyl for that. Um, these ones aren't. You know, everyone should own these albums in their collection. Um, but I 
actually didn't have them on vinyl. So I, I went through and um, grabbed them. So, uh, of course, the legendary Hello 8s. These sound fantastic. Um, what year are they? It says 2015 here. I thought they were um, 2020. Oh, well, all good. Um, I like the uh, like the uh, cardboard finish. I don't, uh, the uh, What do you call it? The gloss um, finish um, usually is the finish that people go for, but this is um, really good stuff. I, I prefer the sort of rough cardboard feel to these. Um, very, you know, they stick to the original, um, you know, all the layout stuff and the classic, uh, is that upside down? That may be, you know, all the stuff you remember from the old CD booklets are in there. Um, but what they got right with this is the sound. The Slayer album sound fantastic. Uh, if I can get that back in there. Yeah, so nothing to, you know, what's to be said about this? It, you know, everyone's got it. It's a classic album. Same goes for the next one, which is Haunting the Chapel. Again, same as what I said with Hello Waits. Sounds fantastic. They've stuck to the original sort of layouts on these, which is really cool. Um, overall, yeah. Um, for a big label, um, Metal Blade really doing a good job on these reissues when they could just cheap out and do a, you know, people would buy it regardless if they've done a shit job or not. You know, you compare these to what um, Nuclear Blast did with um, the Vader album, which looks good, you know, and all that kind of stuff, but it, it sounds pretty ordinary. And of course, we've got Show No Mercy. I won't bother opening this one up because everyone knows. But yeah, highly recommend these Slayer reissues, that's for sure. Um, I picked these up because I didn't have them on vinyl and they were in Australia as well. So I was just like, ah, I'll definitely grab these. If they were overseas, you know, I would have held off the, um, the uh, destruction reissues that's through uh high roller great job on these they sound fantastic but also um chock full of um goodies you know you got posters and um different colored vinyl i think this is a uh, purple vinyl there we go um yeah again what's to be said about these um this is probably my favorite um destruction album along with infernal overkill but this one usually um takes the cake uh yeah if someone asks me it's always this one um here we go there's infernal overkill they're all very uniform they've got um pretty much the same you know extras and stuff like that um, it's just different, whatever vinyl version you got. This one's the, the blue version. Not a big fan of colored vinyl at all. Um, I prefer black, but I actually like these. So yeah, they're just being done incredibly well. And of course, we've got the um, Sentence of Death EP, which what I loved is the off-center original how it's off center like the, the um sentence to death uh sentence of death uh logo here font you know most people would like uh make it all nice and perfect and move it into the center but um no nah, they they kept it authentic and real i appreciate that again um same sort of extras and whatever that came with the previous two and this one's like a clear splatter sort of thing and that rounds out the destruction albums i bought and this is the last one for the collection update just take it out and it's the legendary voivod i've sort of been just slowly going through and um getting my 
Voivod finals. Um, really hanging for the new album. The songs, the two songs I've heard so far are really cool. Um, I just like the way, you know, the new guitarist is sort of, um, you know, it's very rare that a guy can come through and um, play like, you know, like a classic guitarist from the past without it sort of being coming across really. Um, I don't know. It, it just, the way this guy plays um, on the newer stuff, I think he's doing an incredible job of um, preserving what Piggy did on the older stuff. But yeah, this album sort of in that period where, you know, their popularity was sort of starting to wane, I would say, um, you know, they were sort of moving away from, I'd say metal really. Um, this is a really cool album though. I like this. Um, so yeah, when they, from nothing face um, through to angel rap, this album, things were getting um, slightly less heavy, but um, still really excellent stuff. Um, yeah, definitely check out The Outer Limits. It's a, a really cool Voivod album. All right, and that's it. Um, so yeah, this is just the first video um, to be put up on YouTube. Um, in the future, I'll be doing some different stuff, um, looking at doing some interviews, um, both for the you know, audio podcast, but also for this format as well. So um, yeah, it's, it's just a new thing for me. I thought I'd try it out, see how it goes. Um, but yeah, until next time, drink on and um, have a great day.